Including historical photographs and works of art is one of the best ways to bring life to your genealogy work. Just like this 1798 painting of London and the Thames, these works can help us visualize our ancestors' lives, which were often very different from our own. But before you go out and grab every image you can find off the internet, you need to know a bit about copyright, which is the set of rights that creators have over the things they create. My name is Di Davis from Genial Cymru here on YouTube, and I use a lot of images in my genealogy videos, and the majority of them fall under the public domain designation. So images come into the public domain when their copyright expires. That usually happens between 50 and 100 years after the death of the creator of the work. The specific number of years varies by country, so make sure you look up how long that time period is where you live. So when an image comes into the public domain, you are able to use it for any purpose. You can use it for your personal research, in presentations, you can use it in a book and then sell copies of that book, anything. Many of the places where you find historical artwork will usually tell you if it's in the public domain. Here's an image of a British tilt forge from the 1850s from the Yale Center for British Art. When you look at the image on their site, you'll see the copyright designation clearly labeled. Same with this image of David Lloyd George on his 1918 visit to Morriston, Swansea, where my grampy grew up, and which comes from the National Library of Wales. One thing that I do encourage is always crediting the source of the image, because it helps future researchers and it also shows the world that the archives and libraries that digitize these works are important. It shows that the funding that they receive to digitize these historical works is important and should be expanded. Other sites make it a bit more difficult to find copyright information, but they'll usually have a main copyright page. Sometimes they have multiple pages with conflicting information, but if you're ever unsure, you can always send them an email. That's what I did when I found this image of Reverend Timothy Thomas of the Baptist Chapel in Devonshire Square, London. He was a nephew of my eight times great-grandmother. When you write your email, include a link to the specific work that you're wondering about, ask if it's in the public domain or if there's any restrictions on its use and they'll get back to you. I've done this a lot and they're always really helpful. There's one tricky thing that I really want to emphasize about public domain works on the internet. There is a difference between the copyright of the original work and the terms of use for the digitized copy of that work. And sometimes these terms of use add additional restrictions. One database that's like this is Google Books. Many of the books you see there are in the public domain. However, Google, the organization that digitized them, retains certain rights to their digitized copies. So for Google Books, you can only use them for non-commercial purposes. So if you put them on a blog or in a YouTube video and you make ad revenue, that breaks the terms of use. You print a book and sell copies, same thing. It can be frustrating, but there really is so much out there that you can use. The cottage plans that you're looking at now are from the Internet Archive and were digitized by the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and American Libraries. The Internet Archive is one of those places that has a lot of historical books and images which are in the public domain. So go out, do your research, and bring it to life with historical photographs and paintings. And if you're interested in looking at my other videos, check out Genial Cymru on YouTube. Enjoy the rest of the event.